Hi, I'm Sam Kerr. I'm a principal product manager here at GitLab, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the new coverage guided fuzz testing that we're releasing as part of GitLab 13.3. So the repository that I'm sharing my screen on now is a very simple C++ application, and it has a vulnerability in it. And we're going to use GitLab's brand new coverage guided fuzz testing to find it. What coverage guided fuzz testing does is it's trying many different, sometimes thousands or even millions of different inputs to your app to try and find bugs and crashes that traditional QA processes might miss. If we look at the application that we're going to test with coverage guided fuzz testing, it's a very basic one function app uh, with this function called test string in it. You might already be able to see the bug that we're hoping fuzzing can find. Um, namely, this function is taking a flag it's comparing it against user provided input in this source string. And if the flag and the user's input match, the function will return zero. But there's a very subtle bug here that the fuzzer is going to find. Namely that that function will read this source string even if it is too short, even if it's shorter than uh, this flag string. And that's gonna be a very common class of error that developers might run into. So if we wanted to add fuzz testing to part of this project, the only thing that we're going to have to do are two different steps. One, we're going to add fuzz testing to our GitLab CI YAML file, which is going to be just including a template, which is this coverage fuzzing.gitlabci.yaml file. And then we're gonna tell GitLab how to build our fuzzing target. And this is fairly straightforward C++. Uh, this example uses CMake, but we support GNU Make. Or if you're just running on the command line, you can do that as well. And then using our new GitLab cov fuzz binary to actually run the fuzz test. So once we've started this pipeline, let's take a look and see what it looks like. So I've previously run this and our pipeline is two jobs. We notice that after running, the fuzz tester is marked orange, which means it has detected a failure. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it's found. And sure enough, there's a big error log here. The fuzzer has found that crash that I pointed out earlier, and it provides all sorts of different information about where it crashed and how it crashed to allow you to debug it or to create a bug and work with your team to figure out what's going on. So this is the raw output of the fuzz tester. But with GitLab, you also get all that same information in the same places you're used to seeing test results and security results. Namely, if you go to the security tab, all of the different crashes found by fuzzing will re be reported in the same vulnerability interface you're used to. It's going to provide you the crash address, lots of different information, specifically the stack trace to help you debug. And then you can dismiss the vulnerability if you don't think it's an issue, you can add a comment, you can create a normal issue and work it just like any other security result that would have been found by one of GitLab's other scanners. If you wanna do debugging locally, we also provide the ability to download all of those artifacts onto your local machine. So you can take a look at them in the editor of your choice, run local testing, what have you. And as a very brief overview of coverage guided fuzz testing and what you can do with it as part of GitLab 13.3. We're really excited to be bringing this capability to GitLab and our users. We think that it's gonna make a big difference on the way that you test for both security and traditional sorts of bugs. We're very excited to see what you do with it, and we would love to hear your feedback about what works well or what we could do better. I'll leave some links in the description of this video below to our product documentation, our product direction page where you can read more about where we're going with fuzz testing, as well as a number of links to other videos you might find helpful. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.